Hello everyone. As part of learning big data with Hadoop and Spark, uh, so far we have uh, learned about uh, data integrity, data compression and all. Uh, in today's session, we will be talking about uh, serialization, how Hadoop is taking care of data serialization and deserialization, both the things. So first of all, let us have a quick recap of what is serialization and what is deserialization. Serialization is the process of converting an object into a byte stream. Why do I need to convert it into a byte stream? Simple, we need to transmit the data over a network or I want to store it onto a persistent storage device. So I need to convert an object into byte stream which we call as the process of serialization and then we also have the process called deserialization which is the reversal of serialization wherein you are trying to convert a byte stream or byte uh, stream into a structured object fine. Uh, so serialization uh, where are we using it in Hadoop? It is used in two distinct uh, areas uh, wherein uh, the first one inter process communication and the other one when we want to store the data onto a persistent storage, not only storing when you want to read data also. Now what happens during inter process communication? We know two processes will be communicating via message passing. So when uh, in Hadoop also uh, two nodes will be communicating via inter process communication which happens through remote procedure calls. In such case, when at the source node, when you want to transmit the information, an object will be converted into byte stream. From byte stream, it will be sent or it will be maintained in the memory and at the receiving side or on the node where you are trying to store your information, the byte stream is again converted back into object. So at the source side, it happens to be serialization. At the destination side, it happens to be deserialization. Now, whenever we try to talk about something, we talk about what features do we expect from that. So the same way, uh, the remote procedure called serialization format is expected to be uh, compact. Why do we talk about compactness? Now serialization here, we want to transmit our data over a network. So the serialization process should be so compact that it uses very less bandwidth in order to do the job. So if it is um, exhausting the bandwidth, then the actual data transmission might be uh, exhausting all the bandwidth and uh, which is a scarce resource. So what exactly we are trying to do is the serialization process should be compact enough with less usage of network bandwidth. The second one, it should be fast enough. If the serialization process itself is taking lots of time, then data transmission will take too much time because we are transmitting huge amounts of data. So it should be fast enough. Next one, it should be extensible. What do I mean by extensible? See the remote procedure calls or the protocols which we are using, they keep changing, new versions keep coming. Say for example, today I have a protocol with three parameters and I have written my serialization process. After some time, there is a protocol, new version for the same protocol with four parameters. Again, going and changing all my previous work is a complicated task for the user and the user may not feel like working with the system if he has to modify whenever the versions are changing. So automatically, the new version of the algorithm should be able to take the old things without the presence of the fourth parameter. That is what is expected from the extensibility. The next feature should be interoperable. What do we mean by interoperable? It should be supporting cross platforms, various language formats should be acceptable. So the serialization process is expected to have compactness, it should be fast enough, it should be extensible, it should be interoperable. Then whenever we are trying to work with the, the serialization, we are not only working for inter-process communication, the second scenario where we will be using it is when we want to uh, put the data and read the data from persistent storage. In such cases, the serialization process to work with persistent storage is also supposed to have these four features. In Hadoop, the serialization process happens through 
something called as writables. These are the objects which are built in in Hadoop to support the concept of serialization and deserialization. Uh, these things uh, they support they are uh, fast and they are compact, but extensibility is not that good when you talk about writables and also interoperable they support mostly Java it will be tough for us to work with other languages with the existing ones you need to have some modifications which are mandatory to make right. So, when I work with the remote procedure calls the serialization process is supporting all the four features when I am working with persistent storage in Hadoop only two features are uh, undoubtedly supported it is fast and compact extensibility interoperability are still uh, bit questions there right. Then in order to support all these things various serialization formats have come as part of our uh, discussion we will be talking about the writable interface. The writable interface comes basically with two methods the first one for writing data and the other one for reading. For writing we will be using data output binary stream and the for reading its state we will be using data input binary stream these are the objects. Just look at the definition or the declaration of the interface if you see it comes with all these packages and imports are done and if you see the signature public interface writable which is having these two methods write method when I want to write my data onto persistent storage and when I want to read the state or I want to read the data back I have read fields and for write method the parameter is data output object because you are writing onto a file and for read fields the parameter is data input object right. Both the things are likely to throw IO exceptions because we are dealing with the files. And for example, I want to work with uh, int data. So, the object responsible or the interface I can use would be int writable. So, this int writable you can set the data. How do I set writable dot set the data? Suppose for example, the data value is 163, you can set it using this method and similarly, you can also use it via the constructor. then some helper methods are there. So, first I will I would want you to see this serialization process what exactly are we trying to do which wraps a byte array output stream in java dot io dot data output stream to capture the bytes in the serialized format or serialized stream. So, this is exactly doing the job of converting an object into byte stream that is the reason the return type of this method would be byte stream and what it is taking an object right. So, an object is serialized to give you a byte stream. So, what exactly it is doing we are trying to take a byte array output stream which is wrapped into data output stream and you are trying to say writable dot write data out whatever object is there you are using the writables write method you are asking it to write the object and then finally close the stream. Once we close the stream what are we trying to say return the byte array. Similarly see the helper method for deserialization this is also self explanatory just go through this for 2 minutes. Here if you observe the inputs to or the parameters to deserialization are the writable object as well as the byte stream. Once the byte stream is taken it is trying to break it into individual fields of the object and they are maintained into the byte array. Then Hadoop comes with various types of writable classes which supports almost all possible data types which we work just I will show you uh, what are the writable cities supporting all the writable classes are coming from the package org dot apache dot hadoop dot io package. 
So, these are various types of writables which Hadoop is supporting. And all these writables have fixed length format as well as variable length formats. So, which one should we select? Shall I go for fixed length formats or variable length formats? Fixed length formats are pretty good when you know your data size is fixed all the time. Can we guarantee that? Definitely not when we are working with real time data. Uh, we cannot exactly tell all the data items have a fixed format. So, they suggest better you go for variable length encodings. In such cases, uh, say for example, I have int writable. You go for variable int writable. This is the fixed format. You can directly convert into v long writable. If I am just using int writable, it is fixed format. If I want to go for variable length encoding, go for v int writable stands for its variable int writable. And suppose suddenly the value crosses the range of int writable. Again, opening your source code, changing the data type to long is not expected. So, what we say is even though the data is changing from int range to long range, it automatically switches because their encoding schemes are same. So, if I use int writable, I may need to change it purposefully opening the source code and all. If I use variable length formatting, this switching happens automatically and the user is relieved from this complexities. So, by choosing variable length representations, we have room to grow without committing to an 8 byte long representations. So, whenever we talk about text writables, so text classes are there which are done for uh, UTF-8 format encoding scheme. They are looking similar to the string classes of Java, but slight differences are there. So, here I have listed out the differences between the text class of Hadoop and the string class in Java. So, the major change comes when you are working with the text type, you may need to use two string method for serialization and which is not required for string classes. Similarly, we have the writable classes for bytes writable, which uses wrapper class for an array of binary data and the serialized format will be 4 byte integer field. And for example, the byte array of length 2 with values 3 and 5 is serialized as a 4 byte integer in which what is it is specifying? A 4 byte integer field which specifies the number of bytes to follow. So, how many bytes are following? It is a 4 byte integer. Take 2 2 digits as a byte. 1, 2, 3, 4. So, it is a 4 byte integer which specifies 2 bytes are there which followed by the 2 byte array. What are the 2 byte array? Suppose I want to store roll number 3 and roll number 5. I will be storing it in 1 or uh, 2 byte array 0, 3 and 0, 5 each taking 1, 1 byte, right. So, this specifies I have 2 bytes of information. And what are the two bytes of information? In one byte, I have 0, 3. Each digit is taking 4 bits. That is how we have to understand. So, 0, 3, 1 byte, 0, 5, another byte. How do we work with bytes writable? This is how we give this, uh, the code statements. Bytes writable B is equal to new bytes writable. We are instantiating via the constructor and you are sending the information and it serializes. Also, we just want to confirm using the assert method. There is, this is very, very important null writable. When I want to work with key value pairs, entire Hadoop map reduce is based on key value pairs only. So, there are certain values for which there is no key specified. I cannot simply leave it empty. I need to make use of something called as null writable, which is just like a placeholder. 
say for example i want to mention roll number of a student and marks in five subjects i need not repeat the roll number five times instead what i say first time i write roll number marks in first subject for next to four subjects i just mention the key value as null writable because the roll number is already mentioned for the first row that is how we can use null writable as a placeholder and i am not happy with bytes writable i am not happy with the text writable i am not happy with null writable what is the alternative you have the option to write your own custom writable uh, frameworks wherein the user has complete choice of according to my data how do i go for serialization and how do i want the deserialization to happen so custom writable implementation is also there which is part of your lab exercise also so after the first three exercises we will be doing this as part of our lab exercise